Instead of using numerical metrics other than real-time shifts and overall placing to determine rankings, the X Games Street Skateboarding Competition, and in this case the men's final, might be a tough contest to analyze. But let's see how the end result shapes up in the 2022 Chiba installment. Unlike SLS and its narrow focus on street skating, plywood pushing in the X Games contests cover park, vert, and street, and also feature BMX and even Moto X disciplines. All of this activity probably stretches Damn, thin the resources available to have a more technical judging process. Rainy weather caused the men's street finals to conclude prematurely, making Yuto the obvious winner after two finals runs. Uh, I'm so happy like I skated with like all crowd like I did like my like new trick in Japan like this is my dream contest so like I'm so happy. But three full runs were expected to be fulfilled by the eight finalists. Daiki Akita sitting comfortably in second place after his flawless opening run of the entire competition shut down his third run after slipping out from a kickflip front blunt on the wet course. After that, no one else got a chance to fight for a podium spot, and most likely some extra contest money by improving their runs from the first two. Virtually every skater outside of the top three were poised to correct the errors from their first and second runs, including the highly competitive Kelvin Hoffler, who ended up seventh after two runs, but only missed one sugarcane in his first run. If Kelvin lands the sugarcane in run three, and even sneaks in another trick for the ender, you're looking at the only skater besides Yuto and Daiki that has a perfect run. Yuto was the only skater in the whole field to put down two perfect runs, and Daiki was the only other skater to have at least one perfect run. There's no reason to expect second and third place couldn't have ended with any of the other five skaters outside the top three to crack a podium spot. Even in run two, Rebello jumped in front of Jagger for fourth after rolling away from the rare fakie tray lip slide. Lucas's missed back nose blunt in run two is another example of an opportunity to clean up a less than perfect line and crack the top three on his third run. Sora Shirai, who ended up getting third overall, didn't have a perfect run, but his first Damn. run was densely packed with big tricks, including the first trick of his line, the cab back sugar cane to regular, as well as his back one alley-oop switch crook. Damn. Maybe the top three wouldn't have changed even with a third run, but for X Games to simply throw the gold medal on Yuto because of the rain was a disappointing conclusion for the year's first major men's pro street skateboarding finals. Seemed like there was a big rush for the whole event to get finished as quickly as possible, likely due to delays caused by the weather, but again, two runs was not supposed to be the final measure of the skater's efforts. Deshaun Jordan's second six-trick run, if perfected in round three, would arguably beat out Sora's five-trick, 80% consistent first run. Jagger Eaton, known for his clutch performances late in the game, and who won the men's park final before street, Hypothetically, we'll land that Nolly 270 blunt for a perfect eight tricks in the third run, and there's another shuffling of the top three. Ten years at X Games, 11 appearances, you finally got a gold medal! How special is this one for you? Oh man, it's so special. I mean, dude, these guys that you're going against, I mean, it's no joke. Like, you can never underestimate them. They're gonna hit, they're gonna dig, and they're gonna hit, they're gonna dig, and they're gonna hit, they're gonna dig, and they're gonna dig, and they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna scrap and fight to win this, too. I mean, I get my mail sent to these competitions. Like, this is where I live. I live with the pressure. I live in that bowl. I live in the street, and I live in the Apart from the finals, there were some interesting moments in the elimination round, mainly highlighted by Captain Jack Sparrow's great-great-great-great-grandson, Clay Kreiner, skating with one shoe in his run, snapping what Gary Rogers called the last place photo. It looked like he pulled up in the middle of the contest. Disposable camera in the pocket during the run. Got the last place photo and starting a new contest trend that Zion Wright followed when he also skated with no shoes. 
Clay Kreiner did three cannonballs in his last elimination run, which brings to question whether competitors are contractually obligated to compete in whatever finals their sponsors deem fit. If Nija isn't competing, that's almost like a free podium spot for whoever competes in street. So maybe Rockstar figured it's worth a shot to throw another rider into the pit along with Joslyn, who sadly didn't have the day he likely was aiming for. Yuto's display of sheer dominance over his peers, capped off by the switch tray lip ender on run two, left skateboarding's most outspoken commentator speechless. Bro is ridiculous at this point. And Horigome's nonchalance while crushing the field was a spectacle to behold. Battle at the Barracks is chugging along, with this past weekend finding the second round of the Joe's section completely wrapped up, and the train wreck of an influencer section still infecting the tournament with subpar battles. An objectively short match, the Shrimp Daddy Vinny Bond battle ended on a switch varial heel. A deceivingly finicky death blow that has now given letter E to six different skaters. The first switch varial heel death blow was in season one, round one, when PJ beat Tyler Bledsoe on the 57th turn. The only other time someone got out in round two from a switch varial heel was again back in season one, when Paul Shire got quickly eliminated by Benny Fairfax. The switch varial heel flip has a 40% success rate in being avoided as a death blow, with four skaters being lucky enough to land it on their defensive last try. First managed by Eric Ellington back in the third round of season one against Benny Fairfax, but ultimately Eric did lose on a barely passable cab big spin set by Fairfax. Vinny now needs to wait for not only the Jamie and Johnny battle, but then Spencer Barton faces the winner of the Geiger Griffin match. If the stars align for Johnny, I see him going all the way in the influencers bracket, but even if Spencer upsets Geiger, Vinny's going to need to skate out of his mind to be either of them, including Jamie Griffin for that matter. So we might have just witnessed Bond's second and final victory of Battle at the Barracks 12. The Ladner Corey match was a much more entertaining battle. That doesn't mean anything on flat down counts. No feet on the ground, that means no, no complies. No hand plants. Barracks 12, and there's only gonna be one winner but mainly because of Ray's fakey forward flip death blow NBD. There was some decent flat ground in their game, but more distracting was the turnovers. With 16 total, Ray Corey and Justin Ladner's season 12 round two battle is tied for second overall with the most turnovers in a single match. Sharing the ranking with Mike Moe and Eric Costin's first round battle from the same season, Mike Moe and Costin were basically joking around in their battle in order to get to 16 turnovers. And the only battle with more than 16 is the second longest match to ever go down in Battle at the Barracks, which was Sean Malto and Chris Colburn's 140 turn second round saga with 17 turnovers back in season 10. Corey and Ladner's turnovers accounted for nearly 20% of the entire 81 turn battle. Surprisingly, there are four battles with a turnover concentration of 20% or more, led by none other than the Steve Barra vs. Chris Roberts Round 1 Season 1 match. That match ended in 37 turns, and had 9 turnovers, meaning nearly an entire quarter of that battle was a failed attempt on offense before Barra won on a double kickflip. Ray's victory puts him against fellow Karyuma teammate Tyler Peterson, the latter of whom I believe will go to Round 3 facing the winner of two non karyuma skaters, Kyanosuke Yamashita and Nick Holt, which should be a solid battle. The Barracks is pushing their new Fight Night series now, which is basically a less structured production of Battle at the Barracks, and while I didn't watch the entire hour-long replay of Manny, Ivan, Krager, and Apple Butter, it appears that even with a host, refs, and a person responsible for keeping track of letters, Four of the six visible comments were about how Manny and Ivan's match wasn't officiated correctly. The other comment was someone asking for their prize from a giveaway. There was a sick, twisted halftime show where poor Levi was reduced to doing tricks on command from the live feed comments. And Ronnie Krager, who was originally supposed to be in the Battle at the Barracks 12 tournament, 
battled Mark Appleyard, and there was no mention of why he's no longer on the season 12 bracket. 